Mark Platter, Mark just said it that, you know, the special counsel is beginning to face some pressure. That's what we saw on Friday. Mr. Mueller's team was in court trying to advance its tax and bank fraud charges against Paul Manafort, who briefly ran the Trump presidential campaign in 2016. A great op ed from James Freeman this morning in the journal saying, This is a judge who's been serving on the federal bench since the 1980s. He's old enough to remember when the Justice Department special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation was about alleged Russian collusion. Now, He's saying to Mueller, look, we want to know what this is about. We want to know why your signature prosecution does not appear to have anything to do with Russian collusion. It, it's absolutely clear and it's growing increasingly more every day that what we have here, as opposed to the FBI investigating a crime and looking for a person responsible, they're investigating people and looking for crimes. And, and that's just not the way our justice system works. I think you've got now two judges that are starting to push back on that. And the American people, to Mark's point a few minutes ago, are really seeing through a lot of this. Mark, Mark Penn, this is the U.S. District Judge. T.S. Ellis uh, in the Eastern District of Virginia. He says, I don't see what relationship this indictment has with anything the special counsel is authorized to investigate. First, we were told that this special counsel investigation was about Russian collusion. Then we were told it might be about obstruction of justice. Now we're hearing that it's about them finding information about Stormy Daniels and payments to Stormy Daniels. This investigation has gone so far afield of what it was supposed to be. Is, is, that, the, is that proper? Well, think through the logic of what the judge is saying. In essence, and I think he'll get there, the folks that have been targeted by the special counsel's office are really America's first political prisoners. They have piled on the, to these folks with pre-dawn raids, making it clear they're being investigated. In Manafort's case, they started cases in two jurisdictions to make it physically and monetarily impossible for him to defend, even though he is holding out for others. They have threatened them with, uh, with prosecution of their family uh, in order to get them to plead. These has now become political in nature. And while we might have gone after Al Capone for tax evasion, it's quite another thing to apply these techniques to people who work in campaigns and White Houses. We will cannot have a government and a democracy if that's what's going to happen here. Right. And, and Mark Lauder, you know, this judge, Ellis, not only wants to know what this prosecution of Paul Manafort has to do with Russian collusion, he also wants to know what the scope of the mandate that Robert Mueller has is. Uh, because, you know, Michael Mukasey, former AG, yesterday told me that somewhere along the process, Rod Rosenstein expanded the scope of what Robert Mueller can look at. But and, and he didn't share you, that with the public. And if you go back and look at the court hearing on Friday, they were resisting the judge who was asking for that information. So just like with Congress, they are operating in uh, complete secrecy with no oversight. The judge wasn't having any of it. And to your earlier point, it looks like Congress is not having any of it. And finally, we are going to have some transparency one way or the other when it comes to the activities that are taking place locked behind closed doors, looking at people trying to find crimes. So do you think this pushback then is the beginning of perhaps a change in where this investigation goes? Mark Penn, what do you think? Because a former personal attorney for President Trump says the president will not sit down for an interview with the special counsel because of just this. He's describing the concerns about the investigation uh, going all over the place. He said this on Fox News yesterday. Listen to this. The president will not sit down for an interview because this investigation has now reached a level of bad faith. This is no longer a good faith investigation. So what do you think? Is that going wide, Mark, Mark Penn? What do you think? Well, we, we don't really know what the president's final decision is. You know, when I worked with President Clinton, we thought about all of this and ultimately decided it was better for the president to testify than, than take the Fifth Amendment. I think, though, what you've seen is that the president previously just had lawyers who said, hey, just cooperate and this will go away. At a certain point, they realized that this investigation just was becoming an octopus in nature and spreading into more and more areas and was never going away. And now he's playing offense as well as defense. Because if he doesn't find a way to stop the investigation or end it, it will go on for years and years, as the one on Clinton did. Right. And, Mark Latter, you made an important point earlier when you said, look, they're supposed to be investigating criminal activity, not individual people. Once you start investigating individuals like Paul Manafort, like whoever, you can go back 20 years and, and, try, to, and, and try to find something that they may, may have done wrong, which has nothing to do with the Russia collusion.
And that's what you're seeing time and time again. Most of the people who have been indicted, at least the American citizens that have been indicted by the special counsel, have not been indicted for things about the Russian collusion investigation. It is going back looking at their private, prior business experience, their prior business activities. And as the judge rightfully noted on Friday, they are basically trying to put the pressure on them to flip and provide information in their ultimate goal, which is to prosecute or impeach the president of the United United States. That's why he keeps calling it a witch hunt. Right. I don't understand, Mark Penn, why there's such discontent between the Justice Department and Devin Nunes. I mean, they're supposed to have equal powers. That's supposed to be an oversight branch overseeing the Justice Department and the intelligence agencies. But it seems like even today in Donald Trump's presidency, the Justice Department is against any questions about its behavior. Well, uh, not only that, but remember, this is a Republican committee right. chairman going going after Republican uh, attorney general demanding complaints. That is because there's a government within the government. Rosenstein here got recusal of sessions. They even got the U.S. attorney in New York to recuse himself from the Stormy Daniels Cone investigation so that really this government now operates in a complete vacuum of accountability. And, and that's why you see Mark Lauder and I maybe not having the most vigorous partisan debate, because I think we need some more bipartisanship here. Right. right? And whether it's Nunes going after the same party or people of different parties, this thing has gone too far with too much power. The judge said it perfectly people well. People do not want anybody having unfettered power. That's the bottom line. And the Justice Department should recognize that. Mark Penn, Mark Lauder, good to see you both, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.